Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Rick again from Dr. Movie here, cranking out another episode. And man, I want to talk about one of the most overlooked gems of a movie from the 70s that nobody ever talks about. This this movie right here, man, I, it blows my mind that people don't really talk about it. And I, I always try to figure out what it is. I kind of think it's maybe the name, maybe the artwork, because it doesn't really reveal what you're getting into. And what we're talking about is 1974's Death Dream, or uh, Dead of Night, matters where you're from. Um, I'm not a drinking person at all, but there's two movies that I've always said that if I was a drinking person, there's two movies that... After watching it, it would probably make me go to a bar and start drinking. And one is Session 9. For you that know that movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then there's this one, Death Dream. Uh, what a powerful movie. Uh, as simplistic as it is, uh, <laughs> it's such a downer, I guess is the right word. Uh, very, very heavy film. Brought to you by Bob Clark, of all people. Uh of course, Bob Clark, famed for giving us uh, the cult classic, uh, Children Should Never Play With Dead Things. He also gave us the classic, uh, original, Black Christmas. And when you think about that, this is also the same guy that gave us uh, Porky's and uh, uh, A Christmas Story. So you can kind of see that this guy's all over the map when it comes to making movies. And uh, this one... I tell you, I, I'm having trouble finding words for it because it's a uh, it, it's such a heavy film. It's really a retelling of a monkey's paw, you know, if you're familiar with that story at all. Uh, but it's based in the '70s during the Vietnam War, and kind of what you're getting here is uh, starts off on a battlefield, and you're seeing a couple of guys uh, in the middle of battle, and they both get shot. And then it cuts to uh, America and a family sitting at home. And uh, it's a mother and father and, and a daughter. And they're all sitting around. And um, they are having dinner. And the mother brings up their son, Andy, who is in Vietnam. And you can tell that she's totally infatuated with Andy and uh, they get a letter saying that he had been killed in battle and of course the mom doesn't accept it whatsoever uh, not long after that Andy shows up at home and obviously he's not the same person right and so there's that's one thing that's really going on with this movie is you know, the tragedy of, of war. Uh, when people come back from war, are they ever the same, right? So it really kind of gives you that aspect, too, of just what war does to somebody. And they're never really quite the same. So you kind of got that thing going on and, and, and laying underneath all this other story. And the rest is also... Uh, be careful what you ask for, right? Because <laughs> you just might get it. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of the story here of Andy coming back and no longer being the same. And lo and behold, he's uh, he's dead. <laughs> he doesn't have a heartbeat. doesn't have a pulse. And in order to survive, he has to drain people of their blood and inject himself with it. So the same thing that kind of makes Martin uh, an interesting film, you know, Martin by George Romero. It's kind of a twist on the vampire story. And I could say this one is kind of the same when you start looking at it that way, kind of the same concept. The cool thing about this movie with Death Dream, Andy, he, uh, he starts deteriorating. Um, he becomes more gruesome as the story goes on. And it, it's, it's kind of like, uh, American werewolf, right? Where his buddy has been, you know, the one that was attacked and he can't die until the curse is finished. And he just slowly deteriorates as the movie goes on. This, this is kind of the same, uh, 
unless Andy goes out and, and, you know, replenishes his blood supply, it kind of brings him back around and, but it doesn't last very long. And they're trying to put him in situations to make him feel at home, uh, go out on a date with an old girlfriend, all these things. And he is totally not the same person. Uh, and the dad is, I mean, he, he, he gets it. He knows this is not his son. He knows something is up, but the mother is totally in denial. And, uh, the thing about this movie, it's the same way I feel about The Exorcist, right? Uh, not that I'm comparing the two movies by any means, but there's something about The the Exorcist to me that it's one thing to watch it as a young person and be frightened by the effects and stuff, but it's another thing to watch it as an adult and see it from a parent perspective and just how frightening it is to not be able to be there and protect your child from whatever it is. And I get the same feeling from this movie. It's it's one thing to watch it with young eyes and see some of the effects. Oh, by the way, this is early, early Tom Savini effects, too. Uh, one of the first things he's ever done was the effects for, for Death Dream. So you get to see some early Tom Savini here. Um, some pretty frightening makeup work in this for, for as low budget as it is. <laughs> it's it's pretty gruesome as far as what he transforms into but um uh, that aspect again of you know being an adult and seeing this and seeing that this mother is in total denial and will do anything to protect her son now i, I guess one of the things for me is kind of a personal story is i had a an uncle who stayed in trouble all the time. I mean, he's always running from the law, uh, been in, you know, been sent to prison a few times and stuff, get out just to go back again. And my grandmother, for some reason, would always protect him, right? She would do anything to um, try to keep him safe and stuff, which, you know, I get it. You're a parent. But, you know, it's that it's that same mentality here of, I don't know if it's, it's just uh, partial to that kid because you feel like they're just misunderstood. Possibly a feeling of you've uh, uh, haven't been protective enough of them growing up. Uh, it's kind of your fault that they turned out the way they did. Not good enough parenting, so you're trying to compensate for it. All, all those factors come into the story. Um, so I've seen that firsthand growing up, and this is that same idea just blown up to the nth degree of what's going on in this story. Um, don't know all the names of the actors and stuff. Uh, I know that the father was in uh, The Godfather, uh, but the guy playing Andy is absolutely terrifying with this cold, non-emotional character that he's playing. Um, you, you, you just have no idea what this character is going to do from moment to moment. And I really think that's what makes this work. Uh, he seems to remember everybody, remembers everybody's names, but he's so disconnected. And again, this ties back into the idea of people coming back with, you know, uh, issues from, being in war and, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, what what is their mindset? And uh, there's so much going on in this movie. It, it's hard to even really talk about all of it at once. Um, again, I have no idea why this isn't bigger. I even think about the artwork. The artwork is misleading as well. It doesn't really show what you're getting into. And, and again, the name doesn't really you know, uh, captivate you as well as far as this is something you should check out. Uh, I stumbled on it by, well, just by accident, really, and was just floored by it. I remember uh, I was on a show with Duncan McLeish, and we were doing 70s horror, and I brought this movie up, and he was blown away by it, too, because it is so overlooked it's not a typical movie of any kind it's it's not even really scary it's just bothersome and like i said it, it will make you carry it with you for a long time 
Um, it, it's it's very unique, and uh, I totally recommend you check this one out. I I want people, you know, uh, somebody's asked about having some sort of little rating on this show. I mean, I guess we could do a basic like one through five kind of thing. Uh, to me, this is a it's a five. Just because of the impact that it has, it, it, is it well made? Well, that's that's arguable because it is early seventies. It's Bob Clark's second film or so, and if you if you're familiar with his work, you can kind of look in all of his movies, and they all have this grittiness to them. Even Porky's, even a, a toy, a Toy Story, a Christmas Story, uh, they've all got this grittiness to them, and. Uh, maybe that's a trademark. I don't know, but all of his movies have that kind of feel to them. It really is effective in this one. Um, and again, just the, the code, uh, reactions that, that the character Andy has in this is just so bothersome. And the fact of no matter how bad things get with what he's doing, the mother is still taking up for him. Uh, she's just so happy to have him back uh, that she's willing to overlook the gruesome things that he's doing. And that alone is so bothersome. And uh, and the ending as well is, uh, is just floored me when I saw it. Um, man, it, it's, <laughs> it's a very, very heavy film. Uh, if you're expecting... A lot of slasher stuff, things like that. There's not much. I mean, for the most part, uh, you do have a scene where uh, he is killing people and, and taking their blood. Uh, like I said, very much in the style of Martin, something like that, where he's not like attacking them and biting them and drinking the blood that way. He's actually injecting it into himself. Again, just a very weird premise for a lot of this. And uh, just a, just a heavy film. Even the family dog realizes <clears throat> there's something wrong with this guy. <clears throat> so it's uh, uh, it's it's amazing to see how joyous and and happy they are for the return of Andy, and then it just slowly just tears this family apart. It's <laughs> it's so heartbreaking, man. And uh, so I guess what I'm saying is. Uh, if you like your movies with a little more of an adult type theme, something a little more serious, uh, it is still a horror flick any way you look at it. But it's just a little deeper than that. Then I highly recommend this movie. I think that's what makes it stand apart from everything else. Is uh, it's not a typical set them up, knock them down kind of horror flick. This one is very, very smart, very uh, intelligent as far as. Uh, what you're being handed here. Uh, it's very haunting. Stays with you a long time. Uh, it, it's just such a different movie and I can't recommend it enough. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then by all means, go find this movie and check it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And uh, let me know what you think on this one because I, I can see uh, where some people won't get into it because it does kind of it's kind of a slow burn uh again it's 70 so it's you know it's got that that uh that thing about it right but uh i still say you check it out um uh, this is you gotta remember this is all pre-slasher movies just didn't move at that pace at that point so uh i don't know uh to me it made a, a lasting impact on me and I think it will, you too, if, if you just sit and watch it and, and walk away with it, especially from a parent-type scenario and just see what it does to this family. It's it's just so devastating. So uh, give it a shot, see what you think, and, uh, and let me know about it. Uh, that's my thoughts on it. And till then, we will see you next time. Check you later. <laughs>